Welcome to the Wellness as a Way of Life podcast, your one-stop, all-encompassing source of wellness, knowledge, wisdom, inspiration, and motivation. Here we teach you why not all wellness trends are for you, how to figure out which ones are, how to best adapt them for your personal wellness toolbox, and how ultimately to integrate your wellness practices so fully that they become to feel like brushing your teeth, a foundational part of who you are and not a check mark on your to-do list. Welcome back to Wellness is a Way of Life. I'm here on my rooftop recording some podcasts for November. I have some birds visiting their nest that they've created here just below our solar panels and maybe you can hear in the background that some people are finishing up their festivities of the evening with some firecrackers in the distance it's 6 24 a.m and i really wanted to share with you while it's still present in my mind my experience uh, meeting very briefly Elizabeth Gilbert, one of my longtime mentors uh, from a distance, inspirations, idols really. I went to see her speak in Mexico City on Wednesday this week. Her, I'd say the title of her talk was Creative Living. And she differentiated that creative living from, you know, being creative. And how one is undertaking creative living is a selection in a micro, on a micro level, day to day between two paths. When we are creative living, we are choosing the path of curiosity over the path of fear. And she detailed out, I think an important aspect is to understand you, you cannot be in a genuine, sitting in a genuinely curious place following your curiosity if you are sitting in a place of fear. And she talks about this at length in her book, Big Magic, how she kind of like talks her own fear off the ledge and also... Uh, softly and gently and lovingly invites her curiosity to to be more at ease and and give it more confidence Um, so creative living is a curiosity led life that is interesting and, and really not like anyone else's and she tied this all up in a bow at the end saying that it's really about not worrying about what you are producing. It's not the product. You, your life is a work of art. You are the art that you are creatively creating. And I really love that, that reframe to shift out of worrying about what you are producing or even doing or creating um, in that sense and more, you know, how are you living creatively? How are you following that? Your personal unique drive of what makes you curious, what you're curious to follow, what excites you. And so the bulk of her talk was about her plan when she went on her book tour she said it was even 10 years ago now when she went on her book tour for um, Big Magic and it was a six month book tour and she told the story of I believe five individuals which I won't get into here if you um, want sort of a more in-depth please send me a message I'm happy to um, talk about a few of them but I I really just recommend if you get the opportunity to go see her speak you do it because it was so enjoyable I mean she's just so real raw funny inspiring thoughtful like she's one of my favorite human beings so when she was going on this tour she was 
thinking to herself, like, I, in order to be authentically telling people how to live their lives, you know, to take this creative path and to be an authority and an expert on creative living, I need to be doing something while on this tour that is on a daily basis forcing me to take the path of curiosity over the path of fear. And so she thought a long time about what could be her quote unquote art project at, during this time, you know, something that would be easy to travel with. And, um, you know, she stated that she can't really write on the road because she needs a lot of privacy to do so. So in the end, she came to the, her, you know, personal inner project that she didn't reveal to anyone at the time that, Instead of just, you know, shaking hands and nodding and meeting thousands of people on the road um, sort of unauthentically or, or flippantly, she was going to force herself to ask every person that she met on the road a question. And the question was, what are you most excited about in your life right now? And the majority of the answers that she received were so beautiful and immediately connected her to these individuals on a soul level she did say she had one bad experience um you know of someone who who i would argue kind of her shamed her into thinking that that was like a very privileged question or a question from a place of privilege um but generally speaking people just kind of like dropped their walls and met her where she was which is heart centered in her in you know being curiosity led to really get to know this person even though they were had a limited amount of time so just skipping all of the like how are you you know she said the two most common and boring questions that we use default to are what do you do and where are you from and you know those don't really tell you anything on a soul level about people so it was just such an inspiring talk. And, um, you know, she talked about how that question, you know, nine times out of 10 brought her to a place of where life meets life, you know, like people had really personal raw stories that they wanted to share. And when you invite them to share, you immediately connect uh, to their humanity in a way that they might mask that to, you know, strangers or someone who's not genuinely interested so i invite you to think what are you doing right now to live creatively um how can you focus more on bringing creativity in as a style of life based on choosing a path of curiosity over a path of fear instead of focusing more on what you know society as a whole teaches us to focus on is you know your impact or your product or some sort of outcome which is very ego driven um thinking so if you're feeling like you don't even know what you're curious about you know start by talking sweetly like a small child gently lovingly sort of drawing your curiosity out of the closet if you will um and similarly, when I speak about trying to tap into joy, um, I think going back to your childhood is a good place to start. Like, what were you really super innocently curious about as a child? And um, inviting some more of those threads back into your life. You know, maybe it was um, an aspect of nature. Maybe it was a certain kind of story. Maybe it was a place in the world. And, um, yeah, I think there were several moments that I th saw similarities in um, Liz Gilbert's talk to a lot of the things that uh, Srimati or, or Julie Pyatt have taught me in terms of, um, you know, carving your own spiritual path in that, uh, you know, there's not a lot of randomness you know you you can always find these threads that if you wish to see them as you know a spiritual nudge 
in, in a direction that you might want to pursue or pursue that curiosity, right? Um, I think it just leads to a, a more grounded feeling and, you know, invites the magic into your life, you know, um, just being more observant, noticing, noticing your environment in the present moment, but also like thinking back to times in your life where you just had this really incredible encounter and, you know, what's that thread that you can keep pulling on, um, and, and bring it into your life. Uh, yeah. So the last thing that she touched on that, um, again, I thought there was a lot of crossover in my spiritual, uh, practice and, and life and, and what I've been inspired through, through Julie, um, you know, she was asking for a new women's revolution, uh, and, you know, she sort of stated, like, I'm, we've, all these words that we have been using to, you know, ins- quote unquote, inspire women to be fierce, to be badasses, to be strong, to be all these things. And she's like, I don't know about you, but all the women in my life have always been all those things and goes back to all of my ancestors. And, um, uh, the the new women's revolution, Liz says, that I want to see is when imbo- when women embody being relaxed. The revolution in relaxed women, and um, yeah, really profound in that. You know, this Julie talks a lot about um, being in a place of neutrality and. Liz do, does did say, you know, when you're you're in a room, for example, and the person who's most relaxed is usually the person who holds all the power. And, you know, I would say there's still a lot that needs to be done for there to be more rooms where the woman is the most relaxed. But I do agree that it is... Um, a beautiful intention for the next revolution in the women's movement. Liz uh, positioned that it kind of, it requires three things that you as a woman have your priorities clear. Like who are the few people and few things that you're focusing on, um, which makes it easier to, for you to have boundaries, clear communication and establishing and communicating your boundaries And then last, um, mysticism, that you have a connection to some sort of voice from beyond a guiding, a lighthouse, a a personal connection with universal energy or, or, um, a spiritual guide, however you define that and grounding into those things enables you to be in the room and be the most relaxed person in the room, you know? reading the room from a grounded place so yeah that's just a few few super juicy inspiring bits that uh i got to hear her talk about and just reaffirm and thread into my life in a slightly different way which of course just enforces the fabric with which i have i use or support myself with and I'll just briefly, quickly tell you, I was, uh, it was an event, there were over a thousand women, um, it was a relatively small uh, theater in Mexico City, and there were all these other um, female entrepreneurs that are very famous within at least uh, the Mexico City circles, uh, I would say some of them more in terms of all of Latin America, and uh, they all had really cool, inspiring things to say, such incredible energy. And then, um, and at the beginning, Liz was sitting in like the second or third row and I was about the 10th row right behind her. And, uh, I had befriended this woman that I was standing in line. Um, I'd 
we had bought VIP tickets, but there was still a line. They basically just let the VIP line in first to p- select their seats. And we chose uh, to not be in sort of the first section, which would have you like your neck cranked. Um, but instead there was like a, a first section and then a hallway. And we sat at the, the front of the hallway. So we had um, a really nice view. And Maria, this doctor that I had befriended because we stood in line together and then we sat down and we started talking about all things motherhood and um yeah she was giving me the ins and outs and and sort of all of the she was spilling all the tea on who all these uh entrepreneurs were and the, the relationships with who's who's was whose mentor and who was whose coach and you know gave me the play-by-play and uh I had said to her that I have this plan I'm trying to figure out I'm you know, what might be the best strategy here to deliver this thank you card that I've written to Liz and this little gift. Um, well, I had inside the card, there was a hand painted mandala and a, um, Frida Kahlo bracelet. So two of my favorite, um, artists here in Chiapas, Carito, she, um, paints, well, she makes pottery and paints it. And she made, um, little tiny, uh, potted you know pots for tiny succulents that were on um the table at our wedding you know we made a had there were 120 of them and um and she just paints gorgeous stuff and she hand paints mandalas and then um naomi is an artist here who creates all sorts of really amazing things jewelry um i also had her create for my wedding little uh bracelets for all of the grab bags and um it's kind of my favorite gift she's the one that makes the majority of the earrings um that I wear and she makes these really cool bracelets that have like all sorts of charms um knit into them I have multiple versions uh and they all have Frida Kahlo and they're just really fun and I thought that Liz would like it and that the color blue um would speak to her so anyway, um, Maria's like, Liz, that's Liz sitting up in the front seat. Oh my goodness. I think, I think I'm like, well, do you think I should go now? Like, I feel like it's like now or never. And she's like, yeah. So the, when there was like clapping and, uh, you know, a, a changing of the speakers, I ran up, um, you know, it was probably 10, 10, she was 10 feet in front of me, but I just ran around and there had, you know, like these ropes uh, in the section where she was sitting and I could just barely lean over. She was the fourth seat in and tap her on the shoulder and say, Hey Liz, I wanted to give you this thank you card and this gift. Um, and just say, I'm just so grateful for you. And I blew her a kiss and it was all kind of awkward and really fast. And she said, thank you. And, you know, I, I hope she hung onto it and read it. And <laughs> um, my intention was just to express my deep, deep gratitude, which the whole plane ride I had the day to myself in Mexico City. Um, those of you who are moms will appreciate like what a luxury it is to have a 24-hour break and just go walk around um, beautiful parts of a city and sit in coffee shops and write in your journal. And you know, I, I, and I got my hair cut and I just did it a whole me day. And um, I took my time writing that thank you card to her and really just sitting in the gratitude. Um, specifically for the book Eat, Pray, Love. It's the reason that um, I set off to live here in Mexico. And um, when I saw that she was speaking, I actually saw it. She posted, Liz Gilbert mentioned it on her own Instagram account. I I didn't know anything about this network that hosted her here in Mexico. But um, yeah, I just immediately thought like, oh my goodness, this is the perfect full circle moment. You know, we as a family are about to tradition uh, transition to living in Canada primarily. Um, we will always have deep roots here in Mexico, of course. And, um, yeah, so I'm getting a little emotional even talking about it now. Um, I just was so grateful for, you know, having her, her leadership as a woman and being so authentic and, um, inviting me as a young 30 something to follow my my intuition and, and trust the, the curious path. Even back then, she wasn't calling it back then, but it was, you know, allowing 
the universe to send you messages through the people that you meet and being open to the interactions with any and all humans as being, you know, a gift and a potential clue in the path as to where you should be. And uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'll share more of the story of, of that enchanted path that brought me specifically all the way here to Tuxla Gutierrez, Chiapas. But um, you'll also be able to read it in my book that's coming out um, sometime probably next year. Anyway, I'll leave it there for now. Thank you for listening. I hope something inspired you here. Sending you so much love. Hey there. One last thing I wanted to share with you. If you're enjoying this podcast, it would mean so much to me if you could rate and review it on your favorite podcast platform. It really does help us grow the show and this being so important to me to get this message out to more women to help them optimize their wellness and ultimately their lives. This is my mission and I would greatly appreciate it if you could support the podcast by rating and reviewing. Thanks in advance. Have a good one.